فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Allah says wa yaquluna they say ta'atun obedience this is what they say fa'ida barazu min 'indika when they are with you and they are in front of you they say something else to you they say to you ta'ah obedience muhammad good uphold right characteristics that's what they will say allah then says fa'ida barazu min 'indika bayyata ta'ifatun minhu ghayra alladhi taqul but when they go to their people and then other people they say what they weren't saying before this before Allah will bring out what they are hiding. In other words, when they are with you, they talk to you in a particular way. When they leave your gathering and they go to other people, they have a whole different way of speaking. They have a whole different way of the way they do, do things. This is not a characteristic of a believer, especially not a person who's holding on to the kitab and the sunnah. It's not a characteristic. Many people today, they're in front of you, they have one dealing and one way they deal with you. The minute they you walk away from them, they're like, this guy. You were in front of me all day, we were talking, you never said in. Now other people, some people are what? In, whilst they're with you all day, chatting with laughing. As soon as you walk away, they go on Twitter. And they, they write everything that they wanted on Twitter. I was with you. We were talking, we were conversing. And then you jump to Twitter and you write everything different and the way you want. Abdullah ibn Umar and he said, Inna nadkhulu ala sultanina fa naqulu lahum khilafa ma nak ma nak ma natakallam ida kharajna min indihim. Abdullah ibn Umar he said that we when we enter onto the leaders, when we enter upon the Muslim leaders, we say to them that which we don't say about them in public. In other words, when we're with them, we speak harshly to them. We tell them the truth the way it is. We tell them, rectify the situation. Stop what you're doing. This is haram. We say it to them in their faces like that. But when we go out, we tell the people, be patient. Inshallah, he's doing a lot of khair. Be patient with him. But when we're with him is when we bring, the, we, we bring everything to his attention. And then he said, إِذَا خَرَجْنَا مِنْ عِنْدِهِمْ قَالَ كُنَّا نَعُدُّهَا نِفَاقًا Abdullah ibn Umar and as for when you leave him to say things about him that you weren't saying to him when you were in front of him, Abdullah ibn Umar said he used to, we used to consider it to be hypocrisy. Ah, you're with a person, when you're with him you're telling him something, you're laughing with him, you're very friendly with him, you're very mashallah, and then the minute you walk away from that individual, you have a total different way in which you deal with that, with that with, uh, about their situation. Abdullah ibn Umar said, Kunna na'udduhu nifaqan. We used, to do, we used to consider this to be hypocrisy. This is hypocrisy. Uh, so if you want to say something to somebody, say it to them. Let them know what you think of them. Uh, say it to their face, bring it to their attention. At least they will give you that courage. Al-Qa'idatu al-Tasi'atu wal-Arba'oon, the 49th Qa'ida. وَيَعْتَقِدُونَ أَهْلِ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ بَلِّيفِ أَنَّهُ لَا تَتِمُ الرَّغْبَةُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا بِالزُّهْدِ فِي الدُّنْيَا Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe you won't truly love, and you won't have that ultimate passion for the hereafter unless you become aesthetic in this world. As, and as long as you what? As long as you become aesthetic in this world. What does that mean? As long as you start to boycott this world and you start to live a very simple life. Simple life. All you take from this world is the needs that you need for your children, for your family. You don't go too much into this world. And you don't give your whole self to it because this world is only a stepping stone to the hereafter. Qala Ta'ala Allah says in the Quran, Ma kana linnabiyyi an yakuna lahu asra hatta yudkhina fil ardi turiduna arada dunya turiduna arada dunya wallahu yuridu al-akhirah Wallahu azizun hakim. Allah also says, فَأَعْرِضْ عَمَّنْ تَوَلَّ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَلَمْ يُرِدْ إِلَّا الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا The Prophet ﷺ in the battle of Badr, 
Remember how many, and he, and he fought with the disbelievers, how many people died from the, the, dis, uh, the disbelievers? 70. And how much did the Prophet take as captive, spoils of war? 70, right? What did the Prophet do with the 70 which he took? He sold them, right? The money he made from it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Muhammad, you're a Prophet of Allah. You're not meant to be making money out of the dunya. Selling and buying and making money. Allah says, مَا كَانَ لِنَبِيَّ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ أَصْرَى حَتَّى يُثْقِنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ تُرِيدُونَ عَرَضَ الدُّنْيَا Muhammad, you want money? You want to make money out of the captives and the spoils of war? Is that what you want? Wallahu يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ And Allah wants the hereafter for you? That's what Allah set for you. And the Prophet, when this verse came down, he cried so much. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because one of the people was against the idea of the spoils of war was Umar. He was by selling them. He wasn't of the opinion that they should be sold. Abu Bakr was of the opinion to sell them. Whereas when Umar came and he saw the Prophet crying, and he saw Abu Bakr crying, he said, well, you cry Ya Rasulullah, why are you crying? For verily tell me so I can cry with you. And if I can't cry, I'll make myself cry. So Abdullah Umar anhu, he was informed of what, what it was. Allah also says in the Quran, فَأَعْرِضْ turn away. عَمَّنْ تَوَلَّا عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا Turn away from whoever turns away from our remembrance. وَلَمْ يُرِيدْ إِلَّا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا And turn away from anybody who doesn't want except the dunya. Pay attention to this. You shouldn't be hungry, you shouldn't be really befriending a person who you don't even... Would you hang around with a person you don't have the same dreams as? A person you don't share, what do you call it? Somebody who just doesn't want to do a degree, they don't want to study, they don't want to learn. Are you going to hang around with a person like that? Who you know you want to become something, you want to achieve something in your life? Huh? You want to hang around with people like that. The same is a person who doesn't see the Akhirah to be their ultimate goal, that they need to stack up, they need to do righteous deeds, they need to come with good things, they need to pray their prayer, they need to care for those who are in need, and etc. Right? You can't hang around with a person who doesn't see eye to eye with you in this vision. صح? So Allah told the Prophet, فَأَعْرِذْ Turn away from those people who have turned away from our remembrance and no, they don't want anything else except the dunya. If you're practicing and a person is only talking about dunya, money, how to make money, this is how it is, ah, money, 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 all day, this is going to affect and he doesn't want to talk about salah, he doesn't want to talk about how to you know, increase in good deeds, how to be more, more uh, focused on your religion, he's not talking about that. Then this person, you just leave them because you don't have the same needs. So Allah told the Prophet to turn away from those type of people. Ibn al-Qayyim says, وَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ الزُّهْدِ Ibn al-Qayyim says, Aestheticism cannot occur in, from a person except if he looks at two things. In order to attain the characteristics of aestheticism, you would have to have these two things in place. Number one is another of dunya. The person has to look at this world, really look at what it really is, what it's worth. وَسُرْعَةِ زَوَالِهَا وَفَنَائِهَا and how quick this world is perishing and it's finishing. This dunya doesn't remain. Look how fast it goes. Look how many people you know that have been in this world and now have gone. They don't live anymore. They died. They're now in their graves. This world is a very short joy. It's a very short pleasure. That's why Allah said in the Quran, وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Akhirah is what remains. Akhirah is good and it remains. The dunya it goes fast. That's why the Prophet ﷺ came to Abdullah ibn Umar ta'ala anhu and he grabbed him by the shoulder. And the Prophet said to him, Kun fi dunya ka aw abiri sabil. Abdullah ibn Umar, be in this world as though you are a, a stranger, a traveler, aw abiri sabil, or a person who's crossing a road. You don't cross a road for days and weeks, you cross it quickly. You look and you cross. The same is when you're a traveller and you come to a hotel. You don't take your stuff and you don't start taking it out of your luggage bag. And you don't take it out of your luggage and you put it into the hotel room and you start taking over and you start you know, getting your pictures. You don't do that. You don't get your, no, you put everything, you bring the bare minimum out of your bag, true or false. And that's how you should be in this world. You're always packed up, you're ready, you're on the go. That death, whenever, whenever it comes to you, you are doing the best actions and the righteous deeds. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to us in the Quran, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ أَجَلٍ Every nation has a designated time for them. فَإِذَا جَاءَ جَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ 
when that time comes my beloved brothers and sisters it will not be put forward nor will it be delayed the time that's set for you everyone you're gonna you're gonna see it wallahi <coughs> and that day is going to come that set time for you so you're every day ready it can be any minute it can be any second it can be now that you're listening to this it can be the minute you walk out of this mystery it can be any moment in your life one of the righteous people he said to a brother of his he lead the prayer and he said, I don't want to read it. He said, no, no, read, lead, lead, lead. He said, no, I don't want to lead. He said, no, I please, we, I beg you, you read, you lead. He goes, okay, this is the last time I'm ever going to do it. I'm not going to do it again. And the man said, stay back. You're a sinner. How, earth, how on earth can you believe that you're going to live after this prayer? Like when we pray, if you even think that you're going to live, then don't, don't lead us. They never believe that long that they're going to live. They never li- believe that death, life was that long for them. ولذلك أبو بكر رضي الله عنه said والموت أقرب إلى أحداكم that death is more closer to them to one of you من شراك عليه than his shoelaces it's closer to you than anything how many people have we seen who are healthy they are no problem nothing fine walking healthy no problem and they died and how many people we've seen that were sick that had like, illnesses that were serious, but they lived for a very long time. And you know what's funny? You know what's actually very, very sad? The majority of the people who die are the youths. The overwhelming majority of people who die are not the elders. It's actually the youngsters and youths. They're the ones who die the most. Ma'adalika, we don't really think. We think when you're young, you just think you're going to live the longest. But how many people in your family think about it? Do you know who's actually past the age of 60? Rare. Majority of your family members, you can probably count. Turn finger. Think of those who died at a very young age. Take a list of people. The truth of the matter is more people die young. Then, but we only look at one or two people in the, or the couple of few people in the family who have actually become aged and old. We think, okay, you know, I'm going to live. When I get that age, inshallah, I'll sort things out, you know? Yeah. And that isn't the case. So, brothers and sisters, always keep in your heart and your mind that this world is nothing. That's why the Prophet, وسلم, he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, this dunya is not compared to the akhirah illa kama yudkhilu ahaduhukum except one of you placing his fingers inside the ocean usbu'ahu fil yami fal yanzur bima tarja look at what comes back with it <coughs> nothing look at those people who died and they left behind so much money and they left behind so many things where is their wealth where is their money where is their properties and their houses? Other people are divided and sharing it. True or false? Isn't that the case? So in other words, we work for other people. We're working for our children. We're working for them. You build a nice house. You buy a nice car. You get so many good things. But your children are going to inherit that from you. I've seen, wallahi, pay attention to this. I saw a father that died. I saw a father that died back home in Somalia. His children were fighting over the inheritance before their father was even put in the grave. Their father was not yet placed in the grave. He was not even put in. They were already fighting over his inheritance. Are you with me, brothers? The people fighting over the land. This shows, it's a prime example, that true, the true reality is that everyone here is alone. Wallahi, when the day of judgment comes, who's the most beloved person to you and who loves you the most? Your mother. She still wouldn't want to see you the day of judgment. Your mum will run away from you. Your own mum, she doesn't want to see you, man. She doesn't want to see you. She does not want anything to do with you. That is the person who you could say, okay, that is, you know, in this, co- in this country, criminals, thugs, gangsters, rapists, their only person who trusts them and still believes in them is their mum. Mum's always got an excuse for their child. He's a gangster, he's on the street selling drugs. She's like, no, he got arrested unjustly. My son is innocent. Moms always have the biggest excuses for their children. Sah? They believe their children. They see innocency in their children. But that day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبني لكل امرئ منهم يومئذ شأن يغنيه Everyone that day for himself Today is big And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He told us عليه الصلاة والسلام That يموت الموت المؤمن جبين عرقه The Prophet said that the death of a believer is that his forehead sweats That's a sign of what? حسن الخاتمة One of the scholars they said what, what that means is that the believer dies and he's working. He's doing acts of obedience. The sweat, it means that he's fasting and he's praying and he's doing righteous deeds and he's sweating at that moment when death comes to him. Some ulama said that. He's busy 24 7 in do good deeds. Even when he is sleeping, he's sleeping because he's getting ready and he's nurturing himself for what he's going to be doing tomorrow, the righteous deeds that he's going to bring about tomorrow. So to always remember death, ya ikhwah. The Prophet said, أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِ هَذِي مِنْ لَذَّاتِ Increase in the remembrance of the what? Of the destroyer of pleasure. The destroyer of pleasure. To always remember it. And to keep it in your mind. And that's why our Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, if this dunya was anything, this, he would have gained the dunya. Look what he said. One day he came out of his house. The Prophet came out of his home. <coughs> And when he came out of his house, alayhi salatu wasalam, who did he find outside? He saw Abu Bakr and he saw Umar. Now you have to imagine the Prophet of Allah, Abu Bakr and Umar, all three of them came out of their houses. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said to the both of them, akhrajakuma min buyutikuma. What is it that brought you both out of your household? Why are you walking in the streets of Medina at this time? What is it that brought you guys out? And then they said, both of them said, Abu Bakr and Umar, al ju'u ya Rasulullah, we're hungry. Hunger is what brought us out of our houses. And because we couldn't find food in the house, we couldn't sleep. And if your brothers have ever been in a state where you're so hungry, you have nothing to eat, you can't sleep. Then the messenger looked at both of them and he said, Wallahi, by Allah, I swear, ma akhrajani illa makhrajakuma. Nothing brought me out of my house except what brought you both out. Me too, I'm hungry. The Prophet saying this. He had nothing to eat. Alayhi salatu salam. Aisha said, Kana yamurru alayna hilalun wa hilalun wa hilalun la yuqidu fi bayti rasulillahi nara. They used to go seasons after seasons. And in the house of the Prophet, a fire would not be lit. He had nothing to eat. And then Urwa said, Ya radiyallahu anhu, Ya ummul mu'mineen. Ya ummul mu'mineen. What is it that you lived upon? And how were you guys living and surviving? And she said, Al-Aswadan, the two blacks. Meaning, it was dates and water. That's all we had. The Prophet Sallallahu wouldn't have meat to eat alayhi salatu wasalam. So the Prophet Sallallahu walked around and then finally they got a place to eat food from. Alayhi salatu wasalam. The point here at hand right now is, and guess when they got the food and they ate the food, uh, the food was placed in front of them. Abu Bakr and the Prophet and Umar, look what the Prophet said to all of them. What did he say? The day of judgment, Allah is going to question you for this blessing. Allahu Akbar. ستسألون يومئذ عن النعيم. You will be questioned the day of judgment for this blessing which you have been given, this food that you got in front of you, that that, that quenched your thirst and got rid of your hunger. You're going to be asked for it the day of judgment. And today, Allah, we go to a we go to a, a, a chicken and chip shop or we go to a restaurant. And when we go there, guess what we do? We look at the menu. We say, mm, I've been having this for a while. Subhanallah. Which one can I choose? I've had this a lot. Let me have this. We think of what restaurant we want to eat at. Shall I go to this place? No, I don't want to go there. I've been going there quite often. Let me go there. Nah, I'm not going to go there. So if this dunya was something that's worth a lot, who would, have Allah, who would Allah have given it to? Our Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. And look what he said. He said, Mali wa dunya alayhi salatu wasalam. Me and the dunya, the relationship between us two is, inna ma ana karagh. The only relationship between me and this dunya is like I'm a rider. A rider. Fi dhilli shajaratin. I'm a person who's riding on his riding beast. You see, I'm going somewhere. I'm heading somewhere. Okay, pay attention. The Prophet is saying, I'm like this. I'm a, I'm a rider. I'm riding. And guess what? As you're riding, the heat hits you a little bit. You know, you got burnt a little bit. So then he said, I pull over and I go to a dhil, a shade. I stay there for a little bit just so the sun can cool down. And then I go back on my riding camel and I keep going. 
the dunya was that little stopping for me. That was the, that period of time where I stopped. That's the relationship between me and this dunya. In other words, <coughs> I was created, brought to this dunya for a period of time. I'm just here for that little period of time. I'm moving. I'm going to Akhirah. That's where I'm heading. And you don't stay under a shade forever. It's like when you go to services and you're driving on the motorway. You pull over to the service. You go there, you do your business, you put petrol in your car, you get out of the car, you stretch for a little bit, and you get yourself a little, little, a little bite. You keep it moving. That's exactly how the dunya should be for a believer. Not a place where you sleep and you live and you reside. Allah says in the Quran, Subhanahu wa Taala, "Inna ma al-hayati dunya kama in anzalnahu min al-sama'i fakhtalat bihi nabat al-ard min ma yakul al-nas wal-an'am." مما يأكل الناس والأنعام حتى إذا أخذت الأرض زخرفها وزينت وزينت وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حصيدا كأن لم تغن بالأمس كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يتفكرون والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم. الله أوصو سيز واضرب لهم مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء. واضرب لهم مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط فاختلط به نبات الأرض فأصبح هشيما تدروه الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا. الله أوصو سيز اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور. Allah also says زين للناس حب الشهوات من النساء والبنين والقناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسومة والخيل المسومة والأنعام والحرث ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب قل أأنبئكم بخير من ذلكم للذين اتقوا عند ربهم 
للذين اتقوا عند ربهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنار خالدين فيها وأزواج مطهرة ورضوان من الله والله بصير بالعباد Allah also says وَفَرِحُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا مَتَاعَ Also he says إِنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَنَا وَرَضُوا بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَطْمَأَنُّوا بِهَا وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا غَافِلُونَ أُولَئِكَ مَأْوَاهُمُ النَّارُ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Allah also says يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَا لَكُمْ إِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ اُنْفِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ اثَّاقَلْتُمْ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ أَرَضِيتُمْ بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ فَمَا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ He also says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِمَّا اتَّعْنَاهُمْ سِنِينَ ثُمَّ جَاءَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُوْعَدُونَ مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُمَتَّعُونَ He also says, وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ كَنْ لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا سَاعَةً مِنْ نَهَارٍ وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ كَانْ لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا سَاعَةً مِنَ النَّارِ يَتَعَرَفُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ He also says كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَ مَا يُوْعَدُونَ لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا سَاعَةً مِنْ نَهَارِ بَلَاغْ فَهَلْ يُهْلَكُ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ He also says يسألونك عن الساعة أيان مرساها فيما أنت من ذكراها إلى ربك منتهاها إن إنما أنت منذر من يخشاها كأنهم يوم يرونها لم يلبثوا إلا عشية أو ضحاها He also says, وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ يُقْسِمُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ مَا لَبِثُوا غَيْرَ سَاعَةُ He also said, قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ عَدَدَ سِنِينَ قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمٍ قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمٍ فَاسْأَلِ الْعَادِّينَ قال إلا بثم إلا قليلا لو أنكم كنتم تعلمون. He also says وقوله تعالى يوم ينفخ في الصور ونحشر المجرمين يوم إذ زرقا يتخافتون بينهم يتخافتون بينهم إلا بثم إلا عشرا نحن أعلم بما يقولون إذ يقول أمثلهم طريقة إلا بثم إلا يوما All of those verses Ibn al-Qayyim brings it regarding the reality and how one should look at the dunya And the second way that a person should look at it is observing the akhirah and that it is a place which you're going to arrive at. So two things that you need to do if you want to be aesthetic. The first thing is look at this world and what it's worth. And the second thing was what? Looking at the akhirah and knowing it is the place that you're heading towards. The place which you're moving towards. And that is going to be your final abode. Every single body, however high he is, however rich he is, however noble he is, he's going to go to the akhirah. 
Also, the qawaid in this book is al qaidatul khamsun, the 50, 50th qaida. And now, yuqarriruna, they affirm, ahlul sunnati wal jama'ah, annahu yaqa'u al ghalb fi mafhum al wara' min thalathi jihad. Ahlul sunnati wal jama'ah believe that people. They go wrong when it comes to the concept of al wara. Wara means it's a, to be aesthetic, but it basically means to stay away from things that are doubtful to you or to you. Al Sunnah al Jama'ah believe that people fall short in this. Like for example, some people will misunderstand what wara means, and this is as I said before. In the religion, the one of the reasons why deviation occurs is people can't really define what a word means and its reality. So the first reason in why they go short on the concept of wara is because that many people believe wara is only it only involves leaving off things. So the three ways why people go wrong on wara. Is that they only assume wara is about abandoning something, abandoning the wrong things, and the things that are haram, and that's not the case. Wara involves what? Doing that which is obligatory on you as well. So they only think it's all min babi turuk. It's only from the things that you leave off. Number two, one of the reasons why they misunderstand wara is because. The person when he does that which is obligatory on him and he stays away from that which is haram from him, he should do that in all of that in accordance to the evidences from the kitab and the sunnah. Some people they say, Ya Akhi, I'm going to have, like for example, in Saudi Arabia many women wear niqab, right? Are you there? Some may not wear it because it's a religious ruling. They may not wear it because of that. They may wear it because it's a, it's a custom and the norms of the land or some might wear it for that. Okay? And they would wear it because and it's where they'll wear it. They're not covering themselves up. They're fully covering up. But why are they wearing it? Because if they don't wear it, it's going to be, you know, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the punishment that will come with it or whatnot. They're not wearing it because it's what? They're not convinced, league, they're not really convinced by the legislation, they're not convinced by the Kitab of the Sunnah. Are you with me? So these people are doing something which is good, but their motive and their reason behind it, so the reasoning why you're doing it has to be what? Kitab Sunnah, based on the Kitab and the Sunnah, not because of hawa or adat and customs. So a woman would say, Akhi, I don't want to drink standing up, or I don't want to drink in the road on the road. And you're like, wow, mashallah, is there a reason? She's like, yeah, yeah, you know, from our customs and the people that we're from, we don't do this, it's bad. It's not a good thing to do. Sah? So these are customs that people follow. The customs may even be a good thing. A sister not drinking on the road is good. A brother not drinking on the road is also good. It's a custom that the peer person has adopted. But they're not doing it. So it doesn't fall under the chapter of wara. It's not wara.